Behind me, I have BenQ PD3420Q. This is their 34 inch 21 to 9 ultra wide screen pro design display. I am super excited to get this display and we have been waiting for quite some time to get this one into our studio to unbox it and test it. What I'm going to do is open this up, show you the accessory that come with this display, set it up, give you my first impression about this display, and then later on what I'm going to do is subject this display to its full feature test and also give you my review of it. If you live in the US, there are some more great news. Come December, you can get this display now, so this will make a great present for yourself or for someone who are in the creative professional field. Anyhow, let's get started with unboxing. I'm Art and Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Now that I've reset up my space, let's unbox this. With the PD3420Q, the unboxing experience I think is going to be much better than the previous PD displays because you no longer have to really just open the small flap at the top and pull the foam out. So the way how they have done this, it's, I would say, really cool. So essentially what you do is you open these flap up. Let's see, two interlocking flap on the bottom. You flip this open and the displays open up like this. It's really cool. This is pretty much what you see inside the box. So uh, manuals, quick setup guide, basic installation. So some assembly is required. You have to put it on the stand so you can see that there. There is a CD with a user manual and driver, but honestly, I recommend downloading the drivers if you need any of these directly from BenQ website because you're going to get the latest version there. And with all BenQ ProLine displays, it comes with its own individual calibration report in this nice little black envelope. You pull that out. This is pretty much the report cart for this display. It tells you what device was being used to do the measurement, what the internal gamma curve is, what the grayscale tracking is, and the delta E for this display. And specifically for this one, my panel, the average delta E for this one is 1.0225. That is just really awesome for a widescreen display. So this is going to be really cool. I'll put this back in here. And with this display, it also comes with the Hockey Puck Gen 2. So we'll open it up in a moment. We'll put that in. Power cord, obviously. It comes with a HDMI to HDMI cable. Lay this out. This is a Thunderbolt cable. This is a DisplayPort to Mini DisplayPort cable and lastly is a USB 3.1 Type A to a Type B cable in case you're not using the newer computer system that has a Thunderbolt or USB Type C that can do power delivery. From there what we have here is I think this is part of the base or the stand. Let's see. This is part of the BenQ base. So we're going to start pulling this out. And because I have all the cables already in my studio, I'm going to leave pretty much the cables in the bag. Just because I have way too many cables already, so we'll leave them in a box. This is the back cover for the display. So pretty much once you plug in all the cables, you can put this cover on top of the back of the display. This way, the only thing that's coming out is just a cable in the bottom, and you don't get to see the back of it. This is really great if you're working in a creative environment that has multiple people in there and the back of your dis display is constantly uh, pointing at other people. So this way you can clean up the workspace and do a lot more cable management or just at least hide the cables that are being plugged in. I'll leave this one right here for now because I'll be plugging and unplugging a lot so I generally don't put that in for my testing. All right, that being said, I got the stand out. We'll put the stand here. Let's go to and peel it up this up to a second layer. All right, so the second layer of boxing, what we have is the screen itself, which is cool. So primarily, this is pretty much it. Uh, you have the stand, which is a very similar stand to what we see in the PD3220U, their 32-inch 4K one. Again, very similar design, very similar stand. We'll screw this onto the base. I'll do that in just a moment. We'll leave this here. And we have the display itself. So this is pretty much the PD3420Q widescreen display. This is going to be super awesome. Let's see how we can lift this up from the box. All right.
so this is pretty much the wide panel, 34 inch, 21 to nine, and it looks really, really cool. Um, again, Infinity Edge on all sides beside the bottom, so you do have a little bit of edge there, but this is pretty much what we're seeing throughout all the display lineup now. On the side, you still get two, the two USB port. One of them is a USB Type-C, the other one is a full um, USB Type A and that's 3.1. You also has a headphone jack there. On the very bottom of the display, very similar to the one that we've seen before, we have the connection for the power, the hotkey puck, two HDMI port, display port, USB Type C, or a Thunderbolt, USB Type A, and then we also get the two USB 3.1 Type A on the back that's also going to act like an output. And we got this nice controller that is standard from the PD line. All right, perfect. So Let's get this set up. All right, so to set up this PD display, we have the stand, which is this nice piece of solid block aluminum. And what we're gonna do is simply just attach this to the very bottom there of the stand itself. Screw this in, tighten this up, and we're pretty much ready just to hang this on the display, hang the display on here. There's different ways you can do this. You can set this up this way and put the display on. Personally, I like to leave this aside, pull the display up. We'll put the display face down on the table or uh, on somewhere where it's a nice soft surface. This is a pretty clean surface, so I'm just doing that. And what you simply do is hook the stand up in there like so. And it will just snap into place. From there, now we have this PD3420Q. All right, let's power this on and get this going. And I think you're gonna be surprised with the computer I'm gonna hook this up to. So we'll come back in just a moment. Now that I have the PD3420Q set up, there is a lot of first for this display. So this is the very first display in BenQ Pro lineup. That is the SW and the PD line that comes in a widescreen format like this. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. This is a panorama that I shot and I tend to shoot a lot of panoramas using um, vertical framing on a DA10 or DA50. So we're talking about hundreds of megapixel file and being able to view it on a widescreen like this. There is something different about this than being able to view it on like a four by three or a 16 by nine aspect ratio screen. So I really enjoy this a lot. The other first for this display is that this is the first display that is being hooked up to a Mac mini running on an Apple Silicon M1 processor. And the other first too is that this is probably one of the very first PD3420Q that is in the hands of any consumer and the very first video on YouTube. Well, technically it's a second because I have probably already showed this display out in my follow-up of the Mac Mini M1 video. All right, the size of the display is 34 inch. The resolution is 3440 by 1440. So the height itself is equivalent to a 2K resolution display and the width itself is not quite 4K. It's almost there, but it's not really quite, because 4K is 3840, so we're talking about 3440, so we're talking about 400 pixels less or so, but it still looks really gorgeous overall. I mean, I think it looks really amazing. This is uncalibrated right out of the box. Uh, a few other things, this is an LED backlight, this is an IPS panel, so the angle of view is gonna be really amazing, as you're gonna see right now. I'm showing the video rotating this display around. You can see that even on the video, you can see the angles changes, but the picture still looks, you know, pretty much the same color wise. The response time is five, uh, five milliseconds and the brightness overall of this display, the typical is 350 nits. It can max out to 400 nits when you're running in HDR mode. So this is going to be really great for HDR content consumption. It has a coverage of 100% sRGB color space, but what really excites me about this display is that it can cover 98%. 98% display P3 and DCI P3 color space. That is pretty much the highest in the PD lineup as we are speaking right now. So this is really cool. I think this is gonna offer a lot of potential for creative designers. And again, you know, I'm gonna do more testing on this display and find out more about it. It has two 2.5 watt speakers built in so you can use it to play sound. It also has a headphone port on the side. So if you wanna plug in your headphone to this display, you can too. It also comes with BenQ Eye Care flicker-free technology. It is considered an 8-bit panel again with BenQ display is done via an 8-bit plus FRC, but the quality between 10, true 10-bit 10 and an 8-bit panel plus FRC, you're really not gonna see a big difference 
I mean, like I said before, in many of my videos, there is only very specific use cases. For example, if you're doing retouching and you're constantly zooming into 600, 700% all the time, in that situation, you may need a true 10-bit display. But otherwise, you know, an 8-bit plus FRC is going to be working just fine for you. And for majority of my life, I have been using an 8-bit plus FRC. And honestly, it hasn't really come up to the surface as a big conversation piece before. So this Again, it's just going to be a gorgeous display throughout. And with flicker-free technology, you don't really have to worry about that because, you know, BenQ does a really good job with this. The other thing, too, is the Delta E guaranteed from the factory in this panel is less than 3. This panel itself was 1.02. That's based on the calibration report card from the factory. So it's even better than what BenQ have already guaranteed as a spec sheet on their website. Let's quickly talk connectivity. It has two HDMI 2.0. One, DisplayPort 1.4, has a USB Type-C that is capable of doing power delivery at 65 watts, and it also has four USB downstream. That means that you can plug four extra devices to this display. One port on the side here is a USB Type-C, the other one is a USB Type-A, and there's two additional ports on the back of the display itself that is a USB Type-A port. So a lot of room for connectivity on this display. One more thing I want to mention is this display is CalMan Verify and Pantone Validated. So it's pretty much guaranteed you're going to get good colors throughout your entire creative workflow. Anyhow, this has been the unboxing and my first impression of the PD3420Q. And there's a lot of firsts here. And I'm really impressed by this display so far, just playing around with it. I'm going to use this display as my primary display for the next few days and weeks or so. And then what I'm going to do is go over a lot of features, run the calibration on it, and give you my thoughts about this display overall. Like, how good is it really? And what do I really think about it having to use this display every day? Is it much better for my workflow having a widescreen display or is having a 16 to 9 display much better for the workflow that I do? So make sure you subscribe to my channel to find out more in my full review of this PD3420Q. And yes, there will be a lot of comparison between the other PDs displayed that are coming up and maybe some of the SW displays as well. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, you'd like to see something in my full review, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified when I upload cool new contents like this. And until next time, art is right.